Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Having recently got an NVMe drive, I wanted to be able to get the best speed from the drive in my VMs. The only way to get full native speed is to pass through the NVMe controller. So this video is how to pass through that NVMe controller and then boot your VM from the attached drive. This gives you bare metal disk read and write speeds in your VM. So let's get to it. Right, okay, so the hardware I'm going to be using in this video is the Samsung PM961 512GB NVMe drive. And this is going to be in the Ultra M.2 slot of an ASRock X99 board. And the VMs are going to be a Windows 10 VM using OVMF. So what we're going to cover in this video is the following. We're going to transfer our Windows 10 OS from the normal VDisk that we'd install onto over onto our NVMe drive. Now we want to be able to use this NVMe drive passed straight through to a Windows VM without having to have the overhead of using a Vert IO controller. So this will mean we'll pass through the Samsung NVMe controller directly to the VM and therefore avoiding the overhead imposed by the Vert IO controller. Now as you may or may not know, you can't actually set up the OVMF to boot directly from an NVMe controller. So we need to do a little trick I've discovered in order to get the VM to boot the OS from the NVMe drive. Anyway, after we have the Windows VM booting directly from the NVMe drive, we'll run some speed tests on that drive. And there is quite a difference. Now I'll show you the speeds I was getting when passing through the disk as a block device via the Vert.io controller but you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see the faster results achieved from passing through the controller. Also in this video, you'll see how to have the NVMe drive available to the host system, Unraid, when the VM isn't running. This was important to me because I didn't want to use the whole of my NVMe drive passed through to a VM. I wanted to have at least half of it as an XFS partition to store VDisks for other VMs as well. So we will not be stubbing it. So after the VM is finished with it, it will give it back to the host and we'll see it again as an unassigned drive. Well, enough talk, let's start. Okay, I've got my NVMe drive attached here as an unassigned device. Um, if you haven't got the unassigned devices plugin, I really suggest you install it. And if you're not sure how, then you can see my video on how to set up and install the best plugins for Unraid. So at the moment, I've got my Windows 10 gaming machine running. So let's just have a quick look at that. And as you can see, I'm using the Vert.io SCSI controller to pass through this 80 gig VDisk here. And also I'm passing through a partition of a two terabyte hard drive here. And you can see in the crystal disk info that it doesn't actually recognize any disks as actually being here. Basically because we're using the Vert.io SCSI controller. So let's shut down this VM and let's have a look at the template. So you can see here, so at the moment there's two VDisks, an 80 gig boot disk and a one terabyte for data. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass through this device to the VM by passing through its whole controller. So let's go across to tools and have a look at our system devices. Now if I scroll down here you'll see in my IO MMU group 28, this is where the Samsung NVMe SSD controller is. And it's in its own IO MMU group so I can pass this through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy out this line here and I'm going to open a text editor where I've already put some text in. Okay, here you'll see that I've already pasted in some host dev pass through XML. Well, let's just go through what it is at the top here. Now, every address has a mandatory type that describes which bus it's on. So here it's PCI as it's a PCI device we're passing through. Now this part here, the managed equals yes, that means the device is detached from the host before passing it onto the guest. Now this next part here, the address, this is the part that we're really interested in. You see the address is made up of four different things. It's made up of the domain, which is not actually currently used by QMU, the bus, the slot, and the function. Well the function is the multi-function, and that would be the sort of secondary function, such as the sound part of a graphics card. Anyway, let's just paste what we just copied from below. And what we need to do is we're looking for the number that comes after this in brackets here. So for us here, it's 01 colon 00.0. .0. Now this number, we have to translate it into this address here. 
Now the first thing here we ignore. We ignore the domain and basically the number starts from the next bit here, the bus. So the 0, 1 here corresponds to the bus, so this should be set to 1, as the bus here is 1. And the second part of the slot, we can leave that as 0, 0, as we have a 0 here, and after the dot, that's the function part, and that's also a 0, so we leave that as it is. OK, so now we just need to copy this and paste it into the XML of our VM. So now, and let's go to our VMs, and here's our Windows 10 Gamer. And if I scroll down, see at the bottom here, under other PCI devices, the NVMe controller isn't listed. For it to be listed here, I'd have to actually stub it. And I don't want to do that, because I don't want it to not be available to the host. So for that reason, I'm going to manually edit the XML. So if you scroll down, and under the last host dev, I'm going to put this in that we've just edited in the text editor. And then click update. So now if we have a look in here, we can see at the bottom here that you can see it inside the tick box. OK, so now I'm going to start up the VM with the NVMe drive attached. OK, so now that's started up, you can see we have the NVM Express controller now listed here as well. So now let's have a look at Disk Manager. And here's the 80 gig VDisk, and here's the pass through partition, and here is the NVMe drive here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this disk here across over onto the NVMe drive. And to do that, we're going to use some free software called EaseUS to do backup. So just type that into Google and then click onto the first thing you see below and go to Home and Office and click Learn More and then just download the free version. You'll need to put your email address in here and then click Submit. And I've already downloaded this. Um, you can see here it's on the desktop. But before we go and install it, there's just one thing we have to do to our disk. So just click onto it here and just make sure it's a GPT disk. So if it isn't, just click on Convert to GPT. And now we can close this and let's install the software. Okay, so once that's installed, you'll have an icon on your desktop. So just start up the software and we want to click on System Clone. And so this is what it's going to copy. This is our system here. And what we need to do is we need to make sure we tick the destination target disk and make sure it's the correct one. Obviously, I don't want to do this one because this is my pass-through data drive. But down here, here's the NVMe drive here. So we just want to tick that one. And also, we're going to tick Optimize for SSD. And click Next. Now, this will take a little bit of time depending on how large your C drive is. OK, so while this is installing, I'm just going to show you something else very quickly. So now let's go back across to our Unraid server and let's look at our unassigned devices now. Now, as you can see, my NVMe drive has gone from here now. That's because it's passed through to the VM. And the great thing about having done it this way is when I stop the VM, it's going to come back in here as an unassigned device. OK, as we can see here, it says the clone's completed successfully. So now we can click on to finish. And we can close this program here. So now let's just go back to our disk manager. OK, and as you can see here, here's our original VDisk. And here we've got a copy of that VDisk on our NVMe drive. And also you can see here there's an unallocated partition here of nearly 400 gigs. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a new partition in here. And then I'm going to format it in XFS when we're back in Unraid. OK. So now let's shut down the VM, and now you can see that the NVMe drive has popped back into our unassigned devices. So let's click on the plus here, and we can see here is our third partition that we just created. So I'm going to format that as XFS, and then I can use that later on to store some VDisks for some other VM images. So we've copied our OS from the VDisk onto the NVMe now, so now we can remove the VDisk away from the VM. So let's go back to our VM manager and edit the template. Right, so in order to get the VM to be able to boot directly from the NVMe drive, we're going to have to use a modified version of the Clover bootloader. OK, before we attach the bootloader to the VM, let's just have a look at how this bootloader works. Now in the description, you'll find this file, spaces win clover. 7z, a compressed file which is 100 megs, 
download that and extract it. And then you'll have this other file here, which after it's been extracted is about 250 megabytes. And inside this image here, there's an EFI partition which contains Clover. And you can see inside here is the Clover folder. And inside here, there's a folder called Drivers64 UEFI. Now, if you see this here, what I've done is I've put the NVM Express DXC64 driver inside Clover, which allows it to see the NVMe drive. And then I've configured Clover to automatically boot from the EFI partition and boot up Windows. But you'll also find in the description, you'll find the NVM Express DXE64 driver, so if you want to have that for building your own version of Clover with it. And so what we're going to do for the primary VDisk location, we're going to remove the VDisk and we're going to replace it with the bootloader. So just browse to where you've put the special Clover image. And for me, I've put it in Virtual Systems, Special Clover. And what you want to do is change the primary VDisk bus to SATA. Okay, so that's all we need to do now. So we can just go down to the bottom and click Update. Okay, and now let's just start the VM. Okay, and now you can see it's booting up. Okay, so now we're booted into Windows straight off the NVMe drive. And if we go to our disk manager, and so there's our NVMe drive. And this here, this is the special Clover boot disk here. And this other disk here, this is my pass-through data drive where I store my games. So everything's booting straight off the NVMe drive. So I've got that as my C drive. And if we have a look at Crystal Disk now, we can see now that the disk is recognized. And let's just have a look at our device manager. Now if you look at our storage controllers, you can see here there's the standard MVM Express controller and there's also the virtual SCSI controller here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade this to the proper Samsung driver for my NVMe drive, um, hopefully to get just a little bit more performance out of it. But before I do, let's run some tests and see what type of speeds we're getting at the moment. So for that I'm going to use Crystal Disk Mark 5 and let's hit run. Okay, and so the test is finished and you can see the read speed is 2556 and the write speed is 1624. So let's compare these results to earlier. The test without the NVMe controller passed through and the disk just used as a block device. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. The speeds with the NVMe controller passed through are far quicker than without. But let's just do one more test. Let's install the Samsung drivers into Windows and see if we can get a bit more speed out of it. OK, and with the Samsung driver installed, let's run one last speed test. And using the Samsung drivers, we're getting a bit more speed than we were before without. OK, so now let's just put all of the speeds side by side and compare. So, the results are pretty conclusive. With the NVMe controller passed through, the hard disk speeds are much, much higher. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of another video, and it's time for me to go. I hope you liked this video and you found it useful. If you did, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. If you like what I do, then every donation is appreciated, which you can do through the link in the top right. So guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you all in that next video.